We have modeled the motion of a mass on the spring by a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, which means that we can solve this problem analytically. In this video, we will look at the different solution regimes and we will also learn what these different regimes mean physically. So, we have already seen that, that we can model it as m times x double plus c times x prime plus k, k times x equals zero, where m, c and k are all positive constants mass, uh, constant of friction, and spring constant. So you know how to solve a uh, problem like this. You plug in the answer to x equals e to the power rt, which gives you the characteristic equation mr squared plus t times r plus k equals zero. Now, the uh, discriminant over here of the, uh, this characteristic equation, c squared minus 4mk, can either be a positive, zero, or negative. So we'll look at those three cases separately. First we'll look at the positive case, so c squared minus 4mk is positive. This motion is called overdraft. And that's in that case we can find our r plus and r minus, r minus a minus c plus the word squared of the discriminant divided by 2m, and uh, r minus same but then with a minus sign. Well, r minus is obviously negative, but r plus is negative as well. Because in the square root we have a c squared minus something, so what's in the square root is uh, below c squared, so what's in the square root is below c. So we have minus c plus something which is smaller than c, which means that the sum is negative. So also r plus is negative, so both r minus and r plus are negative numbers. Their size depends on what c, m and k are exactly, but what's important is that they are both negative. So your solution x of t equals c1 e to the power r minus t plus c2 e to the power r plus t with two negative exponentials. So what would happen uh, uh, if, if time goes on, those negative exponentials become very small and your motion dams out immediately. So you would have something like this. So motion goes down to zero immediately. That's because the friction is so large. Your c squared minus 4mk is big, so that means basically c squared is big with respect to m and k, so you have a lot of friction, so your motion damps out immediately, overdamped. Now, in the boundary case between c squared minus 4mk, positive and negative, you have the zero case, which is a bit special, of course, exactly zero. So you encounter that, that the physical constant are tuned such that you are exactly at zero, will be difficult, but okay, let's look at it. Uh, it's called uh, critical damping. And what do we have in that case? Well, in that case, the, uh, the r, you just have one r because your discriminant equals zero. So you have one negative r of minus c over 2m. So your solution x of t uh, looks like this. Uh, how does the graph look? Well, in that case, you can have one, uh, you can go down once, you can go through the equilibrium once, depends a bit on your initial conditions, but then you damp out immediately. Uh, okay, we move once through the equilibrium, but go, uh, we, uh, we are go back uh, immediately to zero because you still have a lot of friction. So, what happens then in the last case? As c squared minus 4mk is smaller than zero, it's called the underdamped case. Well, in that case, your, uh, the, the roots of your equation are again minus c plus or minus this number over here, which is now minus positive number divided by 2m, so you get complex roots, uh, minus c over 2m plus or minus times i omega. So that's uh, where omega is this expression over here. Uh, notice your omega corresponds to the omega we saw before in the c equals zero case, because if you set c equals zero, you find omega equals x squared k over m, which is the same omega we saw already before. How do your solutions look like? Well, you have some damping factor, e to the power minus ct over 2m, so that will make that your solutions become smaller in amplitude, and something which is oscillating peri periodically. So what you get is oscillating uh, solutions, which are oscillating with a smaller and smaller amplitude until the, uh, the, the oscillations damp out. This can take a long time, of course, depends on how big or how small c is. So this this interdamped case is actually the most interesting case in that sense, because here you see uh, a mass oscillating around the equilibrium 
but eventually, because there's friction, you're losing en energy, eventually, also here, oscillations will damp out.